Hey everyone! Today we're going to be talking about The Optimist. This is the 11th full-length album by Liverpool-based group Anathema. Anathema began as a doom death metal band in the early 90s and quickly achieved success with their 1993 debut Serenades. This album combined Candlemass-style doom metal with the grueling and visceral atmosphere of death metal. On their third album, Alternative 4, they explored different sounds and incorporated a wider range of instruments. Strings and pianos made their way to the forefront, and the synthesizer also becomes more prominent. Today, Anathema play an atmospheric style of alternative rock. The Optimist is most closely related to Anathema's 2001 release, A Fine Day to Exit. This is a very depressive album that ends its story on some ambiguity. It finishes with the sound of footsteps on the beach, but never really says what happens. This relates to the car pulled up on the shore on the album cover. While this seems fairly innocuous, the backside of the cover shows spilled alcohol, a pill bottle, and a gun, which implies something more sinister. The picture on the dashboard and the lyrical themes of The Optimist suggest that this is all because of a very difficult breakup. The album continues where a fine day to exit left off with this man getting out of the ocean and into his car. The intro track is a set of coordinates that points to Silver Strand State Beach in Southern California, which is the location of a fine day to exit's cover. This album, however, paints a much more positive picture of dealing with loss. In A Fine Day to Exit, the man wants to end his life because he can't deal with the solitude. On The Optimist, he tries to put his problems in the past so that he can properly deal with his feelings and remind himself that he's not alone. It's hard to shake these feelings off, though. He drives all over California, starting off at Silver Strand Beach, up to San Francisco, and even to an eastern town called Springfield, but feels alone no matter where he goes. On top of this, he keeps seeing reminders of his wife and even mistaking that she's there. He comes to terms with the fact that he can't let go of what happened and has to return home to put his problems to rest. The Optimist takes Anathema's atmospheric alt-rock sound and combines it with some subtle nods to progressive metal. The album features sweeping and ambient electronic passages like Anubis Gate did during their Detached era, where electronic percussion would transition ideas or act as the backbone of a track before evolving into live instruments. When the male vocalist hits higher notes, he has a timbre very similar to the vocalist from Hawken. The title track features vocal melodies that would fit nicely on their 2016 album Affinity. Despite these progressive tendencies, though, the song structures are generally the same. The beginning of each track is skeletal and subdued, and it later flourishes into grand and cinematic passages by slowly adding on more instrumentation. Endless Ways is one of the best examples of this. It starts off with this simple piano melody, and it builds tension by introducing vocals and strings and a drum pattern. It then explodes later into a grand and powerful crescendo. The songs are varied enough outside of this that the album stays interesting throughout. The flow of the album also helps a lot. The atmospheres and emotions here go back and forth between optimistic and somber, and accurately represents the rollercoaster of emotions felt when going through a loss. Each song explores a different facet of dealing with loss, and the atmosphere of each track reflects that. This and the clever use of strings gives the album a grand and cinematic feel. Each chapter vividly paints the emotions of the protagonist, whether he is triumphant and in control, or if he is totally broken down by his loss. The two vocalists here also add variety and a distinct separation between his feelings. The male vocalist has a large range and a powerful voice. The female here takes on a Sylvain-style approach with very evocative and dreamlike vocals with a really haunting undertone. Anathema uses this to their advantage by giving the male more optimistic and positive lyrics, while the female sings more about these bittersweet feelings and the surreal nature of dealing with loss. There is also a distinct post-rock atmosphere on this album. While the guitar solos are pretty much non-existent, the guitars add a lot of texture to the music. Endless Ways has some flourishing tremolo picks that glide on top of the music and makes the track feel more epic and cinematic. The track Springfield also features some textured and wailing tremolo picks, but it's so loud in the mix that it's really grating to listen to. There are, however, a few tracks here that bring the guitar closer to the forefront. Leaving It Behind is introduced with some percussive electronics and a repeated guitar arpeggio, and the title track repeats the theme of the song on guitar during the instrumental outro. Can't Let Go strikes a nice balance between these two styles, starting off with this repetitive guitar melody and transitioning back and forth between these are textured arpeggios and the guitar melody here. It will be interesting to see if Anathema will take this post-rock sound further and incorporate it more into their music, because it blends well with their heavy use of piano and strings. There's also a few quieter tracks on this album, such as Ghosts and Close Your Eyes. These tracks rely more on subtlety than they do on a grand crescendo. Ghosts is led by female vocals and is one of the more emotionally charged tracks. It talks about the strange disconnect you feel when you see someone that you used to be close to and you haven't seen in a long time. Ghosts articulates this feeling with a really bittersweet atmosphere. 
The female vocalist hauntingly reflects over the lyrics while strings swell and meander. Close Your Eyes discusses reliving and getting lost in your memories. It features a fuzzy and somber jazz passage that feels like being totally immersed in your thoughts. A couple of tracks do drag on, however, and could benefit from some editing. San Francisco is one of the more repetitive tracks and would have the same impact if it was half as long. The lack of vocals also makes the track more dull as the instrumentation is relatively weak on this track. Wildfires also drags on way too long and is too stripped down to justify how repetitive it is. One of the most glaring issues with length, though, is the closing track. It's about seven minutes long, but has about three minutes of silence after, and then an incredibly quiet hidden track that isn't even really a song. It does provide a resolution to this story, though. You can hear a man playing guitar with a kid in the background, and possibly some kind of bird, which suggests that he's reunited with his family. Despite this resolution, it seems totally unnecessary, though, to place it at the end of three minutes of silence. With this album, Anathema have begun to stretch their legs into yet another subgenre of metal. It will be exciting to see where they evolve from here and what they do with this newly adopted post-rock sound. If you're a fan of post-rock or post-metal, then you absolutely need to give this album a listen. If you like movie soundtracks, then this is worth a listen for the cinematic and plot-driven atmosphere of the album. If you're a metal purist and you dislike the less heavy direction Anathema have taken their sound, then this album will leave a lot to be desired. What did you think of this album? I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned next week for a review of the new decapitated album, Anticult. I'll see you guys next time.